was some of the uh, surprises that you found in your first job compared to sort of the academic side of things? I reckon, to be honest, there's some things where you can't always translate things from the classroom right into the practical things. So obviously when you're in university, you're in, I would say like a controlled environment and you have students there. So everyone also kind of has a background already in knowing what to do, if that makes sense. And then whereas you go into like the local, let's say for me, it was the rugby scene. It was almost like you have to teach them how to do like certain movements or like how many reps or sets they want to do or like how long they have to run at what pace how many times, you know, how how much rest should I be taking in between sprints? Like, how am I supposed to recover as well? So that's probably the big thing I would think is you got to be adjustable, adaptable to like going into a local footy scene or whatever it is. What about the internship? No doubt that would interest a lot of um, students yeah. completing their bachelor's degree. You've, you've done a great, um, you know, great job to be able to get yourself in the doors yeah. and actually see what's relevant, what's not at elite level. Um, no doubt you've had some major learnings as well at, at the pro level that you're now applying at, at Doncaster. Yeah. Um, but I guess for, for landing that internship, why do you think you landed that role compared to no doubt the hundreds of others that, that went for it? I think maybe something that stood out to me was how I mentioned how I can be really communicative and there's things called taking initiative, which I think really matters. So being... Okay. Being to doing things that without being told is probably a big thing, especially in SNC. Um, managing your time, self organization, and to be honest, I think as us as humans, we probably struggle with that all the time. You know, sometimes we're not like doing things that we're supposed to do. Um, I think I just mentioned I also come from a contact sport, so that might have some relevance of rugby um, and understanding what really strength and power is like made of. Um, yeah, so I think just having experience as well and then really selling yourself on your key points um, and maybe something, a big thing that I mentioned is was like how I mentioned I'd rather look at the solution rather than the problem in like a cover letter that I wrote for North Melbourne. I think that must have stood out for me. Was that process a cover letter and then from there you're accepted or was there an interview stage? Yeah. Talk us through, yeah, the process of landing so, it. Essentially, you have your resume and then your cover letter. And then your resume, obviously, you just put your experiences, your name, a bit of background about yourself. And then your cover letter is more so composed of why you think you should be in this North Melbourne, um, for, for my example, North Melbourne Football Club internship. Like, why do you think you deserve it? Essentially, why do you think you should be part of this? Um, and then provide evidence why, you know, like any kind of argument that you you're basically selling yourself, essentially. Um, yeah, that's and then after that, I got shortlisted to do a Zoom interview um, with my manager over at North Melbourne, John Layden. Um, had about I think a fifteen to twenty minute Zoom interview. So you get asked some questions here and there. But going back to Doncaster, mate, talk us about how that opportunity came about. Uh, why you decided to take on a, you know, a, a football club. Clearly, the community sport does have a little bit of money with it, but when you throw in the fact that you're doing your sports science degree, you're doing your internship, which is volunteer-based, uh, and you're working community sport, um, what made you decide to add an extra extra workload oh. to already a busy schedule? Um, so essentially, it's important, I think, where you even though i have this let's say professional level experience where my role is might be as just an intern so it's just helping set up and helping out maybe some players with techniques and stuff but also in our industry i think you even know this through experience where honestly the more experienced the better so instead of waiting to do like let's say another internship after i graduate from university I'd rather have had almost three years equivalent of like experience by the time I finished university because I would have a year with the rugby club and then a year with North and then a year with essentially East Doncaster. From a task management point of view, what are some of your, 
um, ways that you help cope with a busy schedule. You mentioned the next couple of months are going to be pretty crazy. Yeah. Obviously, John Carson's going to go into practice matches. Yeah. Um, yeah North Melbourne's gearing up for games. Yeah. Um, so, and it sounds like uni's ramping up as well. So, what are some yeah. strategies that you put in place to help? Cope um, with all that? Honestly, like, I think maybe late last year, a good thing to do is to just have a month schedule out for yourself, write down what's going on, put it on the fridge and like, just see what's going on for that day or for that week. You know, what's going on. I have a Google calendar as well on my schedule that when I click on Google Chrome, that's the first thing I see. And I'm like, okay, now I know what to do here. I know what I'm going to do here. Um, in terms of priority as well, probably North Melbourne is really, really important to me. Doncaster as well. Everything's probably important. I wouldn't necessarily say there's like a ranking because from my personal point of view, when you sort of do it by like ranks of importance, the more almost like the less you care about something and the less effort you put in. So, and this is just a personal thing where I'd rather just have, give a hundred percent at everything you got. 